I'll give you a little backstory. I, I was thinking on it uh, for the past month since Brandon has asked me to come up and speak. And I know, I don't know how he, how he got you guys ready for this because he's like, hey. He called me up on a Monday morning. He's like, hey, Daniel, why don't you do me a favor? And I'm like, ah, oh, what you got? No. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you want? Be here early on Sunday morning? No, no, no. What I want you to do, he's like, I want you to speak at the end of this month. And I'm like, thank you. It's all right. It's uh, I'll, I'll I'll have to be a little bit more specific next time. Mm, yeah, I'll have that knocked over. It'll be everywhere, and I'll be kicked out of church, la di da. But uh, now he called me up and he's like, "Hey, I got something I want you to do," and I'm like, "Okay." He's like, "I want you to speak," and I'm like, "Okay, man." I he goes, he said something to me. It pertained to. He thought I was intelligent enough, and I've refrained from telling him I probably wasn't, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm like, dude, I, I, I appreciate the offer. And he goes, I, he goes, I want you to do it. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I didn't know Matt was the other option because Matt left. He wasn't here today. So, <laughs> But uh, the more I thought about it, the more I kind of got into the idea of what was going on. I, I've been reading, just kind of studying and going around and just kind of, you know, I don't know, I've been in a weird Bible study. I've been like, all right, one day or one time I'd read through the book of Job, and the next I'd just, whatever, turn to Mark, and I'd read all through Mark. And I just, I mean, I'd skipped around. I never had an actual guided idea of what I was reading. But I didn't really understand it then because God works in mysterious ways, and he's like, hey, I got an idea for you. Brandon calls up, and I'm like, oh, all right. He goes, hey, I want, you to, I want you to speak, Sunday. Not preach, speak, speak. I've already been told, preach, nope, nope, nope. Preaching's just yelling, I don't yell. <laughs> but, uh, and I thought, and anyhow, I got to reading in and just doing some stuff, and I was like, okay, God, I, I've read through this right here. What, what would you like me to do? What do you want me to do? And, you know, I prayed on it, prayed on it, and it's like, you know, you've been reading a lot of pretty much everything. I'm not going to say, you know, speak on everything, but the things that hit me the past month since I've been, I've been reading, it's kind of, kind of amazes me how how God works in our lives how he'll 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 take something that you've read 16 million times before and he'll show you something you never saw in it before and I was like oh man that's so cool so like it, it just blows my mind it really does so I'm gonna say that a lot because it does my mind's easily blown and especially when you got a God as big as it as we got I'm like you know what it's easily blown and that's okay because he's always going to be right there so the first verse that I have in here, here's my notes, hey, I'm glad I didn't lose them, because <laughs> otherwise we'd end up being like freestyle rap or something, which is not going to be good at all, and I'm not sure, oh yeah, no uh, no memory verse, so y'all can just read something and memorize it for this week, so I don't know, but uh, the verse that, that popped in my mind as I was reading was 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. It says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I, as I was reading that, I was like, you know what? We are. I mean, we are everything that is in there. But what blew my mind as I was reading it was like, I started taking, I won't say I take parts out of it, but I started reading it by itself. And it says right there, it says, we are troubled on every side. And we are. I mean, you can't live in this world and not have some sort of trouble. You can't be in this world and not have something because it's just, we're, we're, we're living in it. We're living in a world that is, that is sinful in nature. And, and the way we live in it is it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect us in some way. So I was reading it and I was like, all right, you know, what's... What's trouble? What is being troubled? And I, I, I'd read something one time before. It said, a perfect life is kind of like a lake. Just beautiful. Serene, just crystal clear. And troubled is when you take something and you drop it in the middle of that and everything goes completely different. And I'm like, you know what? How many times in our lives have we been going just, we are just, John ho we are 100% ready to go. And we're like, yes, I've got this day. And about 9 o'clock, something happens. And then, you know, there's a phone call that makes you mad. And you're like, ah, oh, man, 
But I think about that, and I was like, you know, that's not really trouble. That's an inconvenience. Because you know what trouble really is? Trouble is not knowing where your food's coming from that day. That's trouble. Trouble is a loved one that's got cancer. That's trouble. Trouble is, is being in the middle of a war zone with people shooting at you. That's trouble. Not, hey, I've got just enough money to make it through and not enough to, to, to buy what I want, but I have everything that I need. That's not trouble. And I thought about that, and I was like, you know what? And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to kind of break it down here a little bit, the idea that, you know, we're troubled. And, and as I've been reading, some of the things that popped in my mind, an idea of, like, putting certain characters in the Bible with what we have here. And I, got, and I got to thinking about trouble, and the thing that really popped in my mind was when I was been reading in Job. I just got through reading Job about, about a week ago, and man, Job is one of the hardcore Bible. I mean, it is like, you read that, and you're like, man, that is tough right there. So I was reading it, and I got into like, you know, it says, uh, Job had everything that he could ever wanted. He had all his children, he had cow, uh, he had uh he had cows, he had horses, he had everything. And the devil come to God, and he's like, you know, I'm going to test that guy right there. And God's like, well, okay, what do you know? He's like, don't, don't hurt him, but you can take everything from him. You don't talk about trouble, losing all your kids. They're gone. Nothing left. All, your, all that you worked for your whole life, gone. Nothing left. And I got thinking about that, and I was like, man, Job is cool because... It says that, that he, that he said, naked I came into this world, and naked I'm going to leave. You know, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's hard to do. I mean, I've been like, hey, my coffee wasn't quite as hot. Man, oh, gosh, this is awful. Terrible, terrible day. But Job was like, hey, I've lost everything. Shut these clothes, rent these clothes. And he's like, I came in naked. I'm leaving naked. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it says, at no time did, did Job ever go against God. And, that, and that's hard. I can't believe that. Because like I said, I mean, it, just, it amazes me that the, the level of which Job, his dedication to what God was and had done, because he, he loved him so much, but he also trusted in what God was doing. He didn't know. We don't know. We don't have a clue what's going on most days. I don't at least. I mean, I don't know. Y'all may have it all together, but I definitely don't. I promise you that. And it, it's one of those things where I looked at, like, the idea of what Job was in my life. And I wrote down some things, you know, that, that was troubled on all sides. And I, like I said, there's things that we get troubled with politics. Oh, man, if you listen to the news, it's like right versus left. And if you're in the middle, you're, you need to choose a side. No, that's, that's not necessarily true. I, I prefer to choose my side up as opposed to left and right because that's where all our help comes from. That's where all our help comes from. It says our, all our hope is coming from the Lord. I don't trust the blues and I don't trust the reds, but what I do trust is God. I mean, things go bad, economy goes down. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I can't, I can't do anything about it. I can't, add a, I can't add an inch to my stature. I can add a few pounds to my side, but I can't add an inch to my stature. So I'm just like, man, I love it. And I, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm like, you know what? We're probably going to be done by like 11 o'clock already. But no, I'm just kidding with you. Uh, I've got six more pages to go through here. But uh, yeah, and, and it says there on the second part, it says, yeah, not distressed. The great thing about, like I said, is that if you know where your help comes from and you know that where your, where your help comes from in this world, there's going to be trouble. But you're going to be like, hey, God, it's yours. It's not mine. Because God says, come to me with everything. Everything. I mean, that goes for the bills. It goes for the health. It goes for, you know, stubbing your toe, it goes for whatever it is, and, and God's like, hey, I want you to come to me because I love you so much. Just just come on. Just come on. And I, I said, it, it amazes me that, that, that 
that he does that. And I don't know, I don't know. That's why I said my brain can't comprehend what's going on. Can't. So, Michael, what was the second part that I have on there right after that? I may not have put anything in order. No, the next one after that. Yeah, 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 that'll work. That's just, just what it is. <laughs> but, uh, and so I, I, I'll go to the, go back to the eight through nine. It'll be fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some. I'm going to be wrong some. I'll probably put the wrong verses in. I looked at my notes and I was like, I don't even have the actual Bible verse wrote for this. And I'm like, I don't know. But it says, we're perplexed, but not in despair. I like that word perplexed. I don't like to be perplexed. I mean, it, it means you're anxious, it means you're fearful, it means you're uncertain about something. And the one story that I was really reading in that I absolutely was just like, that caught me because of how, how just amazing it is, is uh, uh, the story of Bartimaeus. You know, he's the blind guy. I think I brought it in there. Did I put that one in there, Michael? I'm pretty sure I did. It is uh, Mark 10, 46 through 52. It says, and they came, which is Jesus, and his, and his, and his bunch of groupies. It said, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by a highway side begging. And when he heard it, it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he would hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. But they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered him, answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. That story is amazing to me. Because I, I, I think in things in storylines. I think in things is like, hey, this is, I don't know what was going on in Barnabas' life. Uh, other than he was a beggar on the side of the road. And I heard, a, a, I think C.S. Lewis said, we're all beggars. Every single one of us. And that's one of the things that, 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 humbles, that, that humbles me is the fact that we all, it doesn't matter if you've got no money in the bank, if you're negative, or if you've got $10 billion, it doesn't matter to God. You've got to come to him humbly and begging for him because that's what it is. is it, it, it's for a relationship with him, but that's a whole completely different story that I probably will get into at some point, but not right now. But the story of Artemis, I was thinking on it, I was like, this guy... When you're a beggar, you hear things come through. You hear people talk all the time as they're coming through. And Jericho at that time was like a vacation city from what I read. I mean, it's one of those things where people went and they, they kind of relaxed and whatever. But Jesus went through there and he came. But I was saying to like Bartimaeus is, is sitting on the side of the road. And I, I, and I, like my mind went to timelines. Like, you know, 10 days ago, he hears it. He hears it there's a guy five towns over healing people. And he's like, oh, that's really cool. I can't see. Maybe, just maybe, for hope, this guy's going to come my way. I don't know, you know. Two or three days later pass, and he's all like, hey, there's a guy, he's four towns over. And there was a lady who had, I don't know, she, she had an issue of blood. And he was like, hey, he healed her. That's really awesome. Like, hey, I, I, there's a chance that he's coming because two days ago he was five towns away. Now he's four towns away. Day or two later, three towns away. Day or two later, two towns away. One town. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey, you know, they're, they're talking about there's the guy that was there that healed everybody, that was healed the blind, that healed the sick, and healed the, the, all the folks. He's in town. Maybe, just maybe, he's coming my way. Maybe. We'll see. You know, Bartimus is, is laying there, and, and I imagine it says, go back to the, well, there's a whole bunch of them, Michael, please. Walking through, talking, you know how they do. Next verse, please. Wait a minute, yeah, that, that was the right verse. I read it wrong. It says, and then a great number of people, and if you get a great number of people together, you don't hear a lot of talking. 
And you don't hear a lot of folks, especially when Jesus is coming through, they're like, oh, man, hey, you're awesome. Can I have your autograph? I don't think that's how they've done it. But they're like, hey, we love you so much. Well, Barnabas is sitting there, and he's kind of like, hey, I hear something. It's a good distance off. It's not a quiet roar. Shh, Jesus, Jesus. All right. Well, Barnabas is like, hey, I, I hear it, and it, it's coming a little bit closer. Okay. All right. Hey, we're once was five days away, or ten ta- ten, five towns away. It's close in town now. It's so close now that I can hear it. I can't see what's going on, but I know it's coming. I think in a lot of times, like when you're getting ready for it, you're expecting something. You're expecting a blessing in our lives. So a lot of times it comes as out, of, out of nowhere, but you know what? God, sometimes he's like, hey, just wait for it. Like you can feel something happening. I've seen it before where you're like, hey, it's going to be a good day. Something good's going to happen. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to be blessed today. And any time that you wake up in the morning, you can consider yourself blessed because there's somebody that didn't. But anyhow, what, what gets me is that as he's coming in, he hears them. He hears Jesus, and he's like, Son of David! Son of David! And they're like, all the people that are around him were like, shut up. Don't talk. Let's skip to the next verse if you don't hear Michael. So the many charged him that he would hold his peace. And they're like, hey, shut up, dude. He has not got time for a blind beggar on the side of the road. He just come from one of the richest towns in our area. What do you think he's got time for you for? And he's like, no, 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 that's not how I'm rolling today. No, son of David, it says he cried the louder. He cried a more great deal. I got to thinking about that the other day. I was like, you know, the world tries to drown us out a lot of times. And it'll be like, there's something going on in your life. And you're like, and they're like, hey, where's your God at in this? And it happens all the time where they're like, hey, where's your God at in this this school shooting, or where's your God at when there's a pestilence going through whatever it is? And you're like, I don't know. I know he's there. But it's not mine to know. Because God is God. But it, there's times when we get in there, we're like, hey, it says cry more the louder. And I think the, I, the, net, the verse I put in there was uh, Psalms 34, 17. Did I put that in there, Michael? Nice. It says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their troubles. I mean, the righteous cry. And one of the verses that always it stuck in my mind was, uh, well, there's two of them. And for the longest time, I thought they were, they, they were like rubbing against each other because they didn't make sense to me. Because one of them, it says, No, there are none that are righteous, no, not one. And I was like, well, look, God hears the cries of the righteous. And it says right there that there are none that are righteous. Well, well, I guess that counts me out. And then later on it says, He bestowed His righteousness upon us. So therefore, that where we were out of the bloodline, He moved it into the bloodline. Where once we were, we were branches on a different tree, He put us onto His vine. And now... We are part of his righteousness. And that just, oh my goodness, that just amazes me that there's a God in heaven that knows my name, that knows everything. He created the world. Have y'all ever seen the world? I've seen this, I've seen Hayesville. It's pretty nice. Towns County is pretty nice too. I've been a few places. Not everywhere, man. I haven't been everywhere. You know, Johnny Cash has. I wasn't, but... But it just it, it it blows my mind that God would look down and he's like, Hey, you know that that Daniel guy, he's not really good at anything. He's just not a good dancer, he can't sing, he can't do anything, but you know what? I love that guy. And I think I'm gonna give him something two thousand years ahead of him. And I'm like, I I don't deserve anything of that. I don't. But God's like, hey. You don't, but I still do it. I mean, it, it's just, it blows my mind the love that God has for us. That He says, you know, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He so loved the world 
And the world's a nasty, wicked place. But God's like, hey, I love you. And he hears the cries of the righteous. And when you come and roll up there with Bartimaeus, he's like, hey, Bartimaeus believed. Obviously, he had to believe because, I mean, he heard the cry. He heard the cry of Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus, it took, man, it took him three towns away before he figured out, hey, that's, there's a good chance that guy's actually real where there once was nothing. And it, it just, it, I love it because I'm like, God, you are just amazing in everything that you do. From healing the blind to, I mean, I can't think of much more than that. Raising the dead, that's cool. I'd like to been there for that. And you had Lazarus come tied up and coming out of there. I'm, I'm rambling because I do that a lot. Derek said I wouldn't have a problem talking. I was like, I don't think I'll have a problem talking. I'll have a problem staying on course. That'll be where I have my problem. There's a good chance that I will chase rabbits, squirrels, birds. Uh, I will think on TV shows I watched five years ago. But I'm just, yeah, we're going with it. So, <laughs> Yeah. We'll ask him next time to find somebody. You know, hey, we'll find somebody that's really cool. But nah. Um, what did I have after 3417, Michael? I can't remember. I wrote everything down, but I don't remember how I wrote it down. I honestly don't. Oh, I never mind. I won't worry about that one. <laughs> oh, perplexed. Let's go back to the uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8 through 9. Told you we'll go around a lot. So we are perplexed, but we're not to despair. Because it says that, Fear not, for I have overcome the world. That was where I was supposed to put that in, Michael. That's where it was. And I, like I said, and being perplexed is where you're in fear, you're in doubt, you don't really know what's going on. But in that, in the 1633, that's the one I just sent you, I believe. Fear not, I have overcome the world. I mean, it's hard to do because everything gets us scared, gets me scared. I look at things and I'm like, this is absolutely the craziest thing. We got a little bitty fat guy over in North Korea got missiles. Kim Jong Un. I mean, I don't know what's going on with the with the all the people in the Middle East that are okay with mass genocide and killing a whole bunch of people. It scares me to death because I'm like, I'm safe, but other people aren't. That scares me. Because, I mean, I don't, I don't know what, what's going on in their lives. It just, I don't know. I'm a fearful person when it comes to stuff like that. I, I worry about things. That's just the nature of the beast, I guess. So. Let's go on to chapter Corinthians 9. We'll go back to that one. All right. Persecuted but not forsaken. This is what was... Well, persecuted thing, you know, or people come in there, you're like, hey, I'm going to do whatever to you until I don't like you. One of, the, one of the stories that popped in my brain, too, was Samson. And I've, I've talked to, I talked to Brandon about Samson. I don't like Samson. Samson was arrogant. And I don't like arrogance. I just don't like that, hey, I just, yeah, I'm a beast, you know, whatever. Good for you. The, the, but the crazy thing about Samson is that God blessed that guy, but it seemed like every time he blessed that guy, he would do something stupid. And I'm like, okay, all right. Well, he ended up, all the things that he did ended up hurting him to the point where the Philistines had him, had him bound up and chained and blinded. The guy killed a lion with his bare hands and then turned around and did what he was not supposed to do. God said, Take the, you got the Ninevite vow, don't touch dead bodies. He does something stupid, kills 30 people, takes their tunics. You can't get tunics off people without touching them. All right, all right, there's one. He strikes whatever. Anyhow, the next thing's really cool is that he's super shocked. He, he had the Holy Spirit. He'd shake. Oh, and he's just super strong, like Hulk Hogan strong, you know. Maybe better than that. But I'm crunching eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nervousness, I guess. But what was really awesome is that the Philistines trapped him in the city. And I'd never read this before until the other day. The Philistines trapped him in the city. He goes up and tears the gate off the city and walks away with it. 
I'm like, well, that's pretty strong right there because gates are meant to keep people out and keep people in. It's not like a, a cattle gate where, you know, you got it over there and you're like, ah, oh, this will work. You know, no, 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 this is a wood door. He picks it up and takes it off. But then he does something stupid like he always does. He, he falls for the wrong girl. One of the things they told him in the Ninevite vow was don't marry anybody who wasn't Hebrew. I think if I'm not mistaken, he was married three times and neither one of them was Hebrew. God told him don't do it, he done it. Well, anyhow, the last one was Delilah. And not the Halar Delilah, the plain white tees. That was just, you know, he didn't throw up the horn sign. <laughs> but uh, she tricks him. He thinks he's being smart. He's not. He's being really dumb. He's like, hey, what's your kryptonite? He's like, it's not kryptonite. It's my hair, man. I love it. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's long, beautiful hair. And he, they're like, oh, really? Well, tricks him. He ends up getting caught. Getting caught. And he ends up getting blinded. Don't know why I need the notes, so I'm not going by them very well. <laughs> but he ended up getting caught and blinded by them. And I thought about that, you know, for all the world that persecutes us, the world blinds us to it, too. Where we don't understand what's going on. We are like Bartimaeus. We can hear things. We know there's stuff going on, but we can't see what's going on. So, let me get bound to there. I, I've got judges in there, don't I, Michael? Yeah. Well, this is a long one. This is really cool. So then the lords of the Philistines gathered themselves together for, to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god. He was not a nice guy. He was not a nice god. He was not good at all. And to rejoice. And they said, our god hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. We'll go back to that in just a second. All the stuff that Samson had done to the Philistines, they were like, hey, we finally got the guy that's a judge of this world. Or of the, of the Hebrews and... It, it appears to me they're doing a sacrifice to die. I mean, delivered in his hands and pray. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. And when the people saw him, they praised their God and said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass that their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson, bring him up, so let's make sport of him. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. They brought him up, and they're poking and prodding and calling him names. And be like, hey, you know, your mom was fat. I don't know what they called him. Probably wasn't very nice. I, I can't imagine. But it was one of those things where I got thinking, you know, it goes back to the whole God does things for us. And it goes back to like, but there's things that we can't comprehend. But he still, you know, we don't understand war. We don't understand pestilence. We don't understand anything of that stuff. But it still happens to us. It, it does. It's one of those, yeah. Yeah. But, we'll go, it said, and Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. So they got all the people, it's the leadership of all the Philistines is there. Like, you got the president of the Philistine Dagon hunting club. I mean, they're, they're all there. They're all there. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two pedal pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left and Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. And he slew a lot of people. I mean, there was 3,000 soldiers come up on him, and he had the job on him with ass, and he was like, I'm going to kill a third of you. And that's pretty cool. I mean, he's he a tough dude. I mean, he's he a tough guy. But it, it says that he, he did it. And in his time of need, he prayed. He came up to God, and he's like, God, I got nothing else. I am tied to pillars, blinded to everything going on, and they're making fun of me. They're making sport of me. I need you this one time. If he'd have been a little bit more, I need thee, God, before, there's a good chance he may not have been tied to a pillar, blinded. 
I don't know. It just it could have been God's will, and it was because it ended up he took out the Philistines, and they, I don't think they, if I'm not mistaken, it was one of those things where it's like he took out everybody. He took out three thousand men and women, and just just utterly destroyed them. Annihilation, flawless victory. <laughs> You gotta know video games. I just made a joke. It's fine. <laughs> All right, we'll go back to the uh, eight and nine again. Next one, please. It said we were persecuted, but not forsaken, but not forsaken. It looked bad for Samson. It did. It looked like things were going rough. As it was, he was blind. He was tied to a temple in the middle of a of a uh, of a god that they were going to sacrifice him to things are pretty bad it's not looking good bob it's not looking good but god was there it says he's not been forsaken it says he never forsakes huh i knew i ripped out something for the wrong reason the wrong reason yeah yeah. Did I put Psalms 34, 17 in? Psalms 34, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of his troubles. He was there, tied up to a post. And there he was. He's like, God, I need you really bad. I need you really, 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 really bad. Do one good, really, really, really big thing. And he did. And it was amazing. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big Samson fan, but I'm a big God fan. And he likes Samson, so hats off to him. <laughs> Next one we will come up to on, uh, we'll go back to 2 Corinthians 4 9. It said we were cast down but not destroyed. Uh, there's two different ways of looking at cast down. Being cast down is when you're cast aside, thrown away, you're of no use, you're no good. Another way they use it as is when you're like depressed because you're in a downcast mood because you're in, you're in, there's something going on in your life and it, I don't I don't know there there's things that go on in our lives that gets us down and, and you have loved ones dying I mean that's hard we just what two weeks ago buried an aunt I think yeah two weeks ago and we were we were just me and mom was talking about it yesterday and she said you know it's hard to bury a, a sibling. And it's hard to, to bury a, a, a dad. It's hard to bury a mama. And we've all go through it. And it's something that it comes into us. But there's a season to mourn. There's a season to find joy in everything. And God loves us. And it says that he... We'll go back to the uh, Isaiah again, 41.10. Nope, never mind. That was not the right one. 34... 17, Psalms. So the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. He just, he goes with it, because he, he, he loves us. He said he loves the widows. A lot of times he goes into it, and like two things, he said, don't mess with children and don't mess with widows. I mean, I know some widows, and their lives are hard, because where once they had a helpmate, they don't have it now. Or widowers. Or once you had a helpmate and you don't have it now. Somebody you've been with for years and years and years. And where they're gone. And there's a place that just is taken from them. I've never, I, I've not been in that situation, but I've seen it. And it's like, you can't, you, you, there's nothing you can do with that. There's no way of you can go in there and tell them, say, oh, it, it'll be better tomorrow. I don't, as long as you got God, it's going to be better. But I, it's It's hard. It's hard for him. I, I said, I, I'll, I'll skip on that one. I said, I, I, I'm not going to talk about things I can't comprehend. And the loss of a loved one of that great stature, I can't do it. I can't do it. So it says, we are cast down. Did I put in Psalms 46 1? Like I said, I put in like 12 verses in my, on my paper, and I can't remember if I've done it. The God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. When things get bad, when things get good, when things are just things, always turn to God because He's always got your back no matter what. I mean, He's a friend that sticks closer than a friend. And it, we need to we need to realize that 
the power of God is not just in the big things, it's in the little things. It's the fact that you get up in the morning. The fact that you have someone who loves you. The fact that you have someone who, who cares for you. The fact that you can go to your refrigerator and open the door and be like, you know what, I got a half a gallon of milk. Maybe some people don't have that anywhere. And some people who don't have the opportunity for that. He is our refuge and strength and a present help in trouble. Remember, it's not trouble if, it, if, it's, if it's small. It can be troubling, but it may not be trouble. Trouble is something that comes and it, it, it tears you apart. It hurts you really bad. But it's not something that we just we go through that, and that God doesn't care about. It's not something that God doesn't just look at and go, ah, they'll be okay. God's like, nah. He says he holds the tears of all the, all the believers because he loves us that much. He just, it amazes me. Like I said, I, I, I can't comprehend. I can't even get out the, the full notion of what I've got in my brain because my brain works 14 different ways. It's like a knot tied within another knot, tied within a knot in a barrel in the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me sometimes. But yeah, it, it is what it is. And I didn't, I didn't quite make it to 1130. I just shortened it. Because I don't know what, I, I don't know anything other than what I've got here today. I know that God is good. And he's good all the time. Dwell on the fact that he is good. And that he loves us more than anything in this whole world. He loves us more than, than anyone could ever love us. I mean, he gave his son for us. He gave us hope. He gave us love. He loved the unloved. I mean, go out today and find somebody and be like, hey, you know what? This one dude at church, he's a big dummy, but he's all like, hey, find somebody to love. Love on somebody today. You don't know him. Give him a high five. I don't know. Somebody you don't know. Because you don't know what they're going through. We don't know what's going through their minds. We don't know what happened to them yesterday. I talked to uh, talked to a guy the other day. Was at Walmart. I did a, a part time gig there for a little bit, and we was talking. He's like, "Hey," he goes, essentially, "Why are you always happy?" And I was like, "I got no reason not to be happy." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "I said, well." He's like, "Well, you," he said, "You're always." He's like, "You're always ready to do stuff. You're always just gung ho about things." And I was like, "Man, God's been good to me." And it's, I'm not going to be a hindrance to anyone else by coming in with a frown and being like, it's been a bad day. Nah, it's not been a bad day. Hadn't been shot, hadn't been stabbed, hadn't been diagnosed with cancer, don't have Alzheimer's. No one's trying to kill me that I know of. I mean, it, it could be. Possibly Derek may do it one day, I don't know. But life is, life is, is good when we find it, that life is good. Because... God is good, and he gives us everything we ever need, and life is good today. I just said, and if you find somebody, love them, tell them, tell them you love them. Don't, like, give them your address and tell them you love them, you know, and don't ask for their address, so that'd be weird, you know. But honestly, just find somebody to love on today. I don't care if you buy their dinner, you give them a high five, give them a knuckle bump. Just, just be good, because God loves them just as much as he loves us. I mean, it just is what it is. So, We'll bow our head and close out today. God, Lord, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you, Lord, for, for all that you've done in my life. Father, I'm not, I'm not a speaker. I couldn't... I can't, I can't say anything that is astounding or of, of great value to... But you, you can, God. And you, you use the words that I've said to at least inspire somebody to do something a little bit better to be a little bit better, to know that in troubled times, you are there always. That when times are hard, when, when there's fear in our lives, that you are there always. That when they're cast down, God, that you are always there always. Because you are ever there, an ever-present friend, God. Lord, we love you, Lord. We truly do. We, we want to we know you more, God. And we ask you, Lord, just to be with us, be with us the rest of the week, and just help us, God, to us. Because without you, we got nothing. Because we're all beggars. We just know where the bread's at. And we thank you, God, for all you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.